Connecting the Dots, a process of research and writing. When you are assigned a paper or project, does your mind turn blank? Are you kind of unsure as to where to start? Does it make you a little anxious or nervous? Does it make you uncertain? If so, you're really not alone. And it's not just in college that this happens. Many times an employer will ask you to take on a new project or investigate a new resource and you're not really quite sure what the expectations are. So if you follow the rules that I'm going to tell you about, you'll be more prepared with solutions. There are many choices for a research paper or project. Sometimes the hard part is figuring out where to begin. So you need to determine your goals, figure out how you can achieve your purpose, what kind of a plan you'll need for that particular paper, and what resources will help you meet your goals. Let's take the topic idea of the election of 2014 and whether or not the unemployment rate would influence the outcome of who gets elected in 2014. Notice that is a very broad question. You could be looking at gubernatorial races, Senate races, House races, or many other factors. I think I'm going to have a possible thesis statement that says that the outcome of the election of the governor for the state of Florida will be influenced by whether or not the unemployment rate is over 7%. Now I'd have to do some background research on both of my candidates, or possibly more than two candidates. Who is the Republican? Who is the Democrat? Whether there's an independent or other runner? What the unemployment rate is currently? Whether it's been going up or down in the last few months, maybe even a year? Whether or not there have been any polls to indicate how voters feel about each candidate as it pertains to jobs and the economy, and possibly even the unemployment rate. So that would, that would kind of be my background research. I would take that research and find articles, websites, polling places, maybe even a few books that focused on the economy during other elections that would help me answer this question and support my thesis. Remember, for rule number one, you need to know what the expectations of your faculty member would be. So you would take your thesis statement back to your faculty member and verify that this would be an acceptable thesis statement. You would review the assignment carefully. How long does the paper have to be? In the example below, it has to be five to seven pages double-spaced using Times New Roman font, 12 points. And it needed to use MLA formatting with a running header. My professor wants me to use the MLA style guide for more details and they want me to state my thesis at the beginning of the research paper. I need three peer-reviewed resources and no more than two other non-peer-reviewed sources. Websites are not allowed without prior approval. And I need a cover page. I would definitely go back to my professor with my thesis statement. And then I might even ask for some resources to be recommended or which databases might be appropriate and then I would go to the library, use those resources, or ask the librarians for help as well. Rule number two, your research paper is not normally a summary. Your professor is not normally asking you to summarize a book, an article. Now that does happen if they're asking for that. But normally your professor is going to use such words as show how, explain, or illustrate. If you see these types of keywords, your professor is really not asking you to summarize your readings. He is asking you to argue your position. Rule number three, pick something that is interesting to you and that should be interesting to your audience. If you don't pick something that's interesting to you, you're much more likely to procrastinate. You're much more likely to put things off you're much more likely to rush into your research and select the first two or three articles that you see. So try to pick something for which you'd like to spend some time actually investigating it. And remember who your audience is. 
it's your professor. Brainstorm your ideas with yourself or your classmates or your professor. You could try concept mapping. Concept mapping is where you put the main idea in the center and then work out from there as to what would be related information and then provide supporting ideas and details. It's kind of like an expanded outline. This can help you focus your resources, select the right articles and websites, and also make sure that you really do have related supporting information. Sometimes there isn't enough information for a paper. Normally that's not a problem, but once in a while that might happen. So check the library's resources to see if there is enough information available to support your thesis and answer the question. Remember to talk to the librarians. They can help you select the right resources fast. Now you can begin writing, either using your concept map or starting with an outline, or both. Write your first draft, making sure to quote and reference your resources properly. Plagiarism is a serious offense at St. Leo University. There are consequences for plagiarizing, borrowing papers, buying papers, downloading papers from online. Make it your own work and make sure you cite properly. If you need some help, you can ask for help from the Learning Resource Center on campus or from the library's instructors. We have two of them for research and writing. Their names are John David Harding and Angel Jimenez.